o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Morning. Orlando Navarro, present. Erasmo Villarreal, present. Roberto Rodriguez, present. Minnie Dora Haynes, present. Lalo Uribe, present. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. We have a quorum. First item on the agenda. Uh, discussion of possible action to approve the guaranteed maximum prize proposal for Newman Elementary School. And you can scroll in. I was reading it from up there, Eddie Darling. Oh, discussion sorry, of possible <laughs> action to recommend approval by the Board of Trustees of a guaranteed maximum prize for the Newman Elementary School cafeteria expansion and kindergarten wing building addition. Well, right off the bat, you go no, see on the slide here. We've got the uh, guaranteed maximum price proposal of $1,489,333. The, the construction budget that we had allocated for this, for this project was $1,414,000. So that puts us about $74,000 over the construction budget that we initially developed about two or three years ago. Now, within this guaranteed maximum price, we have a $50,000 contingency allowance. So we may not use any of that, which means the overage would be about $24,000 at the end of the project. Now, even though it's 24,000 over the project, we'd still like to recommend to the Board of, of Trustees to approve it, because what we did is we actually added 610 square feet, I believe, Vicky? Yes, sir. Of a cafeteria dining area uh, from the initial scope of work that we had come up with about two or three years ago. So for $24,000, we actually added another 610 square feet of a of dining area. So I think we're, we're, it's a very good price for the project that we've got. We will have, we will be able to find the funds. As a matter of fact, we've already identified an area where we can move over, excuse me, to cover this overage, if it gets to 74,000, which we doubt. We don't see a whole lot of contingency usage. So we'd like to recommend uh, an approval, a recommendation to, to approve for our board of trustees. We have some floor plans that you would like more information that are attached to the council. Okay. Well, just in, in fairness, excuse me, Madam Chair, uh, just in fairness to the contractor, he, his first go round for maximum price, what you're saying is he didn't really have the dimensions correct. You, there, there was an addition to it, so. Well, no, actually, actually we, had, we had actually gone back to him a, a second time and questioned some of the pricing that he had, that he had submitted uh, initially, because we were, I think we were much more over the, uh, the budget than this. We went back and adjusted some of his, uh, some of his pricing for, for different, different trades that were in there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an, one other thing that, uh, also increase the price somewhat. We actually fire sprinkled the area, which necessarily wasn't going to be required, but we just felt we'd like to see a, a sprinkler system in there. So that was included in there. And even with that, we're at 74,000 over. I think we have some floor, floor plans here. Well, we have a, here's a construction schedule. It begins this September. We should finish up by August of next summer, 2016. I don't know if you want to make it. Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members of the Bond Committee, and administration, and members of the audience. Uh, this plan that was developed by our architect, Design Group International, shows the existing uh, dining areas at Newman Elementary <coughs> School. Uh, on the further left uh, bottom corner, you see just the entrance into our kinder classroom wing. Currently, the connection where you see where it says new canopy, it's only a metal cover canopy. Uh, that's one of the items that I know the parents and the committee during the bond uh, planning meetings, uh, the citizens advisory committee, uh, they really were adamant about enclosing that because children to go to kinder, pre-kinder, back and forth between the main building and the kinder classroom uh, are exposed every day throughout the day four or five times as they go back to the cafeteria or the library. Uh, throughout the day to, you know, all the uh, inclement weather when there are conditions. And they lose quite a bit of time uh, uh, putting on all their jackets, you know, five, six-year-old students, so it takes a while to get the whole class ready to go outside and then take them off for the activity, whether it's lunch or PE or library, put them back on, go back. So it, it is a lot, a lot of instructional time, so they felt enclosing that canopy and it was one of the items included under the bond program. That is incorporated also in the guaranteed price. As far as the dining area, the expansion uh, was kitchen and gained a little bit of space on the dining area. On the like Mr. Zuniga mentioned, the original design, 
uh, that was prepared by the architect had only the kitchen area and then that blue area along the uh, right side of the area right there was going to be the additional dining but it was very very narrow very minimal uh, one of the items uh, that we look contemplating uh, as far as the boundaries that will be changed by Mr. Zuniga for Newman in the next coming year due to a lot of construction in that sector of, of that boundary or attendance boundary I think there's a lot of apartments. Uh, I'm not sure about the enrollment, <coughs> but it's about 200 more students. Yeah, we're, project we're projecting an increase in the next several years because there is some new uh, new housing going up in the area, some new apartment complexes going up and stuff. So we're projecting an increase in our student population at this campus. Casa Verde Road, mm -hmm. I believe, also will be incorporated in with this attendance boundary. So this was a perfect time uh, to be able to uh, incorporate any additional expansion to the cafeteria. As it is currently stands, it's, it's adequate, but once we get those additional 150 or 200 students, it will be very, very crowded. So the administration there and the PTC met, and they wanted for us to look into adding. So you see those 610 square foot of the new dining area, that was never really part of the original scope of work. Uh, there was a lot of built-in costs when we add on to the building for the kitchen. So the cost per square foot on that new dining, it's, it's really very, cost effective because you're already expanding, you're taking electrical, all the utilities. So, and really the roof and the exterior walls is really all that we're at, basically just the, the shell for that new lighting area. We will incorporate in the new air conditioning system for the kitchen to enhance the dining area to take care of that, that if there's adequate cooling and heating. So the cost, the proportional cost of adding the dining area was really uh, about 100, $15 a square foot when we broke it down. So it was, this is really the time because once uh, to add on, once the kitchen is built, it will be uh, kind of uh, all blocked out and uh, it will be uh, very difficult to expand the cafeteria. Uh, it will all be incorporated within the design. So that's what we have. As far as the kitchen, uh, we do have all new equipment. That blue area that is on the, on the right between the library and the dining, that is really our current kitchen, but it's a very small uh, kitchen. I mean, they do minimal servicing there. They, they do very little cooking there. Most, most of the food is brought in, just heated there, and then it's served. But it's very narrow. Uh, we may have some issues if, if the, well, when the student population increases. There's uh, potential for accidents in that tiny area because we're going to have to add maybe another cook. I think it's very, very small, so we needed to expand the, the, the kitchen area, which is that lime green area. All the lime green area, that would incorporate a walk-in freezer, walk-in cooler, all the uh, ovens, uh, the kettles that we have in all our prototype new elementary schools. It will bring it up to exactly the same standards. As far as the dining area, with the expansion of that orange area, the new dining, we figure out the exact square footage and it will also bring it up to be exactly the same net square footage that we have in our new prototype elementary schools. So that was one of the ideas why we requested the contractor and the architect to incorporate it at this time. Even though it does go a little bit over budget, we felt it's really the most uh, effective use of, of this construction project at this time and be able to get it up to the same level as far as core footage capacities as the rest of our elementary schools. And we get the five items that total to the $148,000 savings what is it about those items that, I don't know if they're not being used or being looked at differently so we can have that savings? Correct. Uh, look, you're looking at the second page, right, where it yes. says the reduction from yes. 1,600,000 to 1,489,000. Mm -hmm. uh, during the design, we have a standard design number one, is the removing of the aluminum double doors and windows and installed hollow metal doors. Actually, the hollow metal doors is really the standard that we use in our new elementary schools. Mm -hmm. The architect had used aluminum doors because he felt it would give him maybe a little bit better aesthetic mm -hmm. appearance. But since day one, we actually had an issue with that because we tried them before, like at La Marca Muni Vergara, and they don't really last the wear and tear. Uh, they look very nice maybe for commercial uh, or maybe in some areas that don't have heavy traffic. Mm -hmm. So we were gonna remove that or value engineer it and go to our standard hollow metal door. They're more heavy duty. Mm -hmm. And they have a good appearance. So that's one at 22,000. The same with the windows, it would match all the frame metal instead of aluminum. Okay. 
The second, removing ceramic tile waste spot. That 29,000 really was something, again, the architect had put in there to kind of give it a little facelift to the rest of the school. Uh, but our new elementaries, we really don't have uh, the ceramic tile because that would be really in the uh, kitchen area. There is a restroom there for the staff. And currently, we just have a block and it's painted. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, deduction of HVC energy management system from 15 to 5,000, that was just a number that they originally submitted that was too high. Mm -hmm. And once we asked them to actually detail it and, and explain why it was that high, they reduced it voluntarily uh, to 5,000. Their number, original number, was was too high and really it was based uh, on lack of detailed information. Once the engineers and the architect gave them more detail, they were comfortable with reducing the cost without changing really the scope of the work. I believe you overpriced it because you didn't know exactly where the control was. Correct. There was not enough information at the time he provided the price. So he kind of you know, yeah. hedged his bets and decided to overpriced it because he didn't know where he was going to connect to. He was trying to cover his, right. his, so for the unknown down. conditions. Once we did research, we located it in the library uh, and gave more detailed information, he was able to lower it to 5,000. Number four, those are voluntary deducts that uh, Mr. Sviniga mentioned earlier. We asked a, for a detailed cost breakdown from the contractor by trade, for example, how much for the masonry, the foundation, and so on and <coughs> so forth. And some numbers didn't really match with our RS means standardized costs. Uh, other numbers, they, they were at RS means or below. So those were acceptable, but there, they had some that were a little bit high. And typically, we don't uh, allow any contractor to go over the RS means uh, cost index. So those, I think you alluded to earlier, were just basically going back and sharpen the pencil and fall within our standard costs and without changing anything uh, as far as scope of work. Number five, uh, that one, uh, it was a revised guarantee price that was dated originally included a sprinkler system, and it included all the entire dining room and kitchen. We went back and actually left that uh, fire sprinkler system within the, uh, the scope of work. Uh, they had some issues as to exactly wanted, similar to the energy management system, more information. Mm -hmm. Once we were able to, uh, to uh, confirm what was needed, as you notice, they really did not reduce any cost on that. Mm -hmm. I think they just listed there to ensure the district that they have that item within their GMP, that, that it is included, yes. Just to be clear, because there was discussions back and forth, uh, again, the fire sprinkler system is really optional, but we highly recommend it. Because it's our, again, our standard policy <coughs> now in all new facilities that we're building, we include fire sprinkler. And this will include it also in the dining area, not only the kitchen. For safety, I mean, we do have a lot of assembly meetings and uh, so. And then Mr. Delfino, that's a, or the architect on this project, had, had told us that he discussed it with the, with the fire chief and that uh, sprinkler wasn't needed. Um, I asked him, did you get it in writing? <laughs> and he goes, no. I said, I don't want to at the last minute not be able to use the area because all of a sudden now they require a sprinkler system. So I said, just include the, the sprinkler system in the, in the project and let's move forward with the price. Now again, adding, like, if you look at your take a, the square footage cost at an increment of about $115 for the additional 614 square feet, that's about a $70,000 value. So you know, even then, I think we have a very good price on our guaranteed maximum price. And again, we'll be able to cover any slight over overage that we have on this project. Question, what's the uh, yes. maximum occupancy for the, uh, the cafeteria? At this point, it's about 250 students. Once we, uh, with the additional area, we'll go to about 300. You go up to 300? Yes. We, may, you know, we have staggered uh, lunch periods. Yeah. Is, okay, well, I guess the next question would be, what is the current enrollment? Mm. Can anybody tell? I mean, I'm sure somebody knows. But. Mm. I think it's about 700. I, I think max. It's 600 and change yeah. at this point. Okay. You stated that you were looking at a potential 150 new students coming in. Mm. And I'm assuming that you guys already looked at capacity for new 150 that they will fit within what you've got. Oh, yes. And of course, we always have the options. 
Well, so we only have that much that for us if necessary. Okay. Yeah. At one time, I believe Newman Elementary, I'm talking about maybe 12 years ago, it had close to 1,000 students. Yeah. And of course, we had some portables. What, what really helped is that Kinder Wing that was added about 50 years ago, we added those 14 classrooms. So the main building is really from second grade up to fifth, and they have the space for a little bit of growth. But I think all that area around Newman Elementary had kind of been stagnant as far as growth, but I think we're changing the boundaries for Benjamin. Well, that was my next question going to be. What are the boundaries of the school now? Well, right now, when the, when the city opened up Bartlett, we were able to move um, right there where Bartlett and Jackman intersect. I think it's called the Summer Wind Subdivision. Yeah. yeah. Right in there, those students, we ended up moving those students to, uh, to Newman. They were coming mm -hmm. all the way to Colonel South. And then in the future, we'll, of course, we'll do some more boundary changes. Uh, or actually, as new development goes up, we'll be assigning those to, to new. What, what is your south boundary of that school? Um, is it Gale? Sure. No, not Gale. Is it uh, Hillside? The south I think goes a little bit further it south. Goes further it's more like yeah. these boundaries, right? It's where Cotula is. Yeah, okay. The yeah. Cotula, okay. The, the creek. Okay. That's where LISD is. Yeah. The, the apartments that you're considering that are coming in or the new units are already under construction? Oh mm -hmm. my God! Yes. Yes, sir. And also on the okay. new vision, new vision subdivision. There's a lot of well, there's a lot, but there's some more coming in. And there's mm -hmm. apartments. Throughout there's there's some more coming in at the base, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a monstrosity back of KGNS. Where does that one also? Yeah. yeah. Is that <coughs> go to Newman or does no, that go to? I believe those are going to go to Gettys. Oh really? I think that's the yeah, discussion yeah. right now. Yeah. I think that's discussion. Again, nothing's finalized. I mean, we're not putting it's it out in the public. To Newman. I know. <laughs> now the planning department has a lot of detail, so uh, we can uh, provide that information to you. Our planning department did the, the actual construction areas and a projected enrollment <coughs> increase for the next year, two yeah, years, and like five they, years. They, they tried to find everything they, they knew that was possibly there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There's, a, there's a new apartment on uh, Springfield, like at the end of the Mm-hmm. Just a question on, on the, the, the contractor, um, yes, they're sure. bonded on each job? Yes. So absolutely. he's adjusted his bond mm -hmm. to cover the, the difference? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. we, we do that, they have to provide proof of bonding before we issue a contract to him. For the full amount? For the full, yeah, for the full yes. project amount. And the uh, bonds, uh, cost of the performance payment bonds are included in the deal? Okay. That's the good answer. Yes, sir. What are the wishes of the committee? Madam Chair, um, if I may, even though I'd just like to put a disclaimer out there that we just have to protect the interest of the, the money. And uh, even though this, I think, is a, a wise choice to kind of expand for the future growth, uh, that we'd be very careful in the future. Uh, with these additions for, for sure. further schools, but that being said, I'd like to make a motion that that we um, that we uh, recommend recommend uh, one million four eighty nine three thirty three to Sertuche Construction as their guaranteed maximum price for New Manila Country. Is there a second? Second motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Discuss an impossible action to recommend approval by the Board of Trustees of Competitive Seal Proposal CSP 055 2015 for construction of main security stations at various UID, UISD campuses, phase one. Gordon? Administration recommends um, award of CSP 055-2015 to Vision Construction in the amount of $309,440.74. The proposal includes, um, the base proposal is $265,490.74 and it includes a contingency amount of $35,000. 
and alternate two in the amount of $8,950. Um, do you have any questions on the actual scope of work or proposal? I have Mr. Ignacio Aranis here to discuss that. This is a project that we had, we had come to the Bond Oversight Committee maybe last year, mm -hmm. and the initial design almost looked like the entrance to a theater, a movie, a movie theater. Um, that initial guaranteed maximum price came in at, or the proposed price came in at about $80,000, where we have about $40,000 budget per site. So they actually had to go back and redesign everything. It's a much simpler design. We feel it, it now fits within our budget. Again, the, the 309 that we're looking at has a contingency amount of 35000 which we don't anticipate again using, but we always throw that in there just, for, just to be on the safe side. Those are the schools? Uh, yes, sir. Those are the schools. That's phase one of, of the, uh, of the uh, <coughs> security stations for all our existing campuses. Of course, all the new campuses that are going up already have this security station built into them. It's part of the scope of the work. How many proposals did you get? We only received one proposal. What? From Vision. Mm -hmm. and actually, we had to go out. We went out twice. twice. We went out for our proposals twice on this. And twice you only got one proposal? The first time we didn't get any. The first time we didn't get any. It's a very intricate project because it has to be conducted while school is in session. It's an entire year. And even though it's a small room, it's right, right at the main entrance of each campus. Uh, limited working hours, you know, they have to work around the uh, existing campus during school hours. So it, it's a very lengthy process and, and uh, very, a lot of electrical technology because it's the main hub for the security and police officers. The entrance will have the uh, security cameras incorporated in the design. Does uh, it involve um, access control work as well? Yes, uh, yes it does. Um, it, it involves, basically it was the same design as we had before, but we kind of simplified it, made it a little smaller. We left out some of the exterior enhancements, with a lot of tile work, and it's still an attractive entrance to, the, to each campus that will blend really well with the masonry materials. It won't look like a, a patch or an add-on, but I think a lot of it was just simplified to what was really basically needed. We met with the police department and just value engineered it to what is the essential, what is really needed. But we left a lot of uh, conduits and for future expansion of technology. I think with uh, the future, we're going wireless and a lot of the uh, uh, surveillance systems probably a lot of the uh, wiring may not be needed. But we're, the reason we're only doing seven schools, we're splitting up all the district in different prototype designs. And we're doing uh, it to the working with the architects. So these seven schools uh, is one type of design, correct? Yes, so it's a previous prototype, as you all are maybe familiar with, the Killam prototype mm -hmm. of design. And we have uh, seven campuses exactly like that. So we're gonna tackle that group first. That'll be phase one, I guess, what I guess it is. It'll be the same design in D7. The next phase two, next year, starting next summer, we're working on the design. It will be a different prototype of, like, Matias de Llano, what is linked on the It's about eight or nine schools that were built under that design concept. So the entrance is a little different. So each of the schools that have a different design will have design-specific needs. Correct. And you'll be working through them per needed. Correct. Is this company from? South Texas, around here. They have an office here in Laredo. Uh, we did check together with purchasing all their references. They have excellent references. I think they're mainly housed out of San Antonio. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot of work yeah. with school districts in San Antonio. Yeah, he mm -hmm. used to be local here and he moved to San Antonio, but he does have a local office. Yeah. No way? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. And we did receive okay. references, uh, very good references from architects from school districts. Um, this is the first time they submitted a proposal to the district, so it was... But he has done work for the Yes. And here in Laredo, for a lot of work for the U.S. Uh, General Services Administration, yeah. or GSA. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Immigration, U.S. Customs, a lot of renovations and additions in their facilities. The International Bridge and on highways. Building construction throughout. Uh, we do have... a. Uh, some alternates that we requested uh, in addition to the base proposal. 
uh, things that we would like to incorporate, mm -hmm. and they were included in the cost. There is a contingency because it's seven schools, and, and even though whatever we, whatever we find in one school should be in the other six, sometimes there are differences that may be unexpected. We may not use all of it, but we would bring up a report to the committee as the funds would be required for any unforeseen conditions. This is a design that was prepared by Munoz Architect, I believe, uh, was presented to you. So the recommendation from staff is to approve the 304 and 85 or the 295? Um, no, I think it's it's the 300. They're only doing alternate two. They're not accepting alternate number one. Uh, but the tabulation includes everything that we asked for. So we, we'd like to recommend the base bid plus alternate number two. Two. Yes. So it, it comes out to the 300, 945. Madam Chair, I'm going to make a motion that we approve um, the administration's recommendation uh, and to award CSP 055-2015 <coughs> to Vision Construction in the amount of $300,945.04. Second. Discussion? Yeah, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, just, just out of curiosity, uh, where on the list, I know that this is a, a secured entrance, mm -hmm. but it seems like this has been moved up in priority. Would it be, what are the chances of holding this off? Well, actually, it was always included as part of stage, uh, phase one of our bond program. And there's some we can, we can uh, push this back? We would like to try and get most, all these campuses done, I think, in two years or three years. Three years. Uh, because all our new campuses that are coming on board now have this station. Sure, absolutely. And that's, and that's one of the, um, this is one of the items that the safety committee of the Bond Citizen Committee really stressed highly. You know, number one, security stations and then the uh, access controls and all the exterior. Uh, right, right. Not, that, exterior. not that I wouldn't want to do this, but, but the complexity described and the lack of bidders on this project seems, seems to me like a, you might well, want to revisit this to <coughs> well, simply sorry. add discussion, but just, uh, sure. I, I wasn't aware of the complexity of, of the design process and working through the school, and, I mean, with the school on and then, you know, the shortage of time to work on it. And it just, it just, even though it might seem small, it's not small, no. it's a big sure. you know. And, um, you know, one, one bidder coming in, uh, I, mean, I don't know if this is something that can be reevaluated. Uh, we have a lot of projects coming out, you know, and I wouldn't just want to rush through them if it's not necessary. Well, that's just this, Mr. G, uh, staff, or our administration, or staff, or uh, Ms. Jackson, you guys have checked his references. He's uh, apparently, <coughs> I remember him, uh, at Asmo, I do. Um, Apparently now he's moved to San Antonio and does a lot of work for school districts over there. Um, I do understand Orly's point, uh, you know, going out twice for for bids and, and receiving only one. Um, you know, I don't know if the cost will go up if we wait. Uh, <coughs> I'm sure the cost of materials continues to go up. So, uh, but I believe we did check, did we check the RS means um, cost for these projects? And they're within the yes. means. So I mean, that's the other safeguard we got. We always compare whatever prices come in with the RS means pricing that we have. And so it, uh, I feel it's a, it's a good recommendation at this point. Again, we did go out, we did have to go out twice. <coughs> excuse me, so we have delayed this project already. <coughs> no, one, <coughs> excuse me, because of the having to redesign and stuff. So we really wanted to start it maybe a year ago. As you enter these security checkpoints, are the employees, will they be required to go in with a proximity card or access control? Yeah, or they will have to have a part to be able to be recorded. I guess is it yes, is recording, like I know when Joe Lopez came in, when I scanned in to go in to work, 
is that the way it's going to? Yes, basically, out? what we have currently in place at the access controls at every elementary school, we're, we will proceed with the same procedures and the same type of security uh, protocol. Okay. This just really allows the uh, peace officer to be the central front of the building right. and have all of this necessary <coughs> surveillance equipment. But uh, we will have the access control and incorporate it into the design from the construction. From the Correct, yes, sir. Uh, so that we have everything rewired and reconnected to work, not only uh, the way it does now, but now in conjunction with the peace officer controlling it there. <coughs> at, because currently, right, what the way it is, as parents go in, the one who has to buzz them in, it will be the secretary who is in the uh, lounge a little bit further from, from the entrance. Mm -hmm. They do have a camera and a, and a PA, two-way speaker, so they can uh, not announce what their reason for, the vi for their visit is, and then they buzz them in. But this will allow us to have not only that secretary or the clerk at the uh, reception area, but also the peace officer. They will have dual control, because at one time the peace officer may not be at the uh, security station. Let's say he's out. You know, the principal requires right. his assistance at one of the areas or he's outside. Well, the, the uh, receptionist will still have the uh, button to be able to let parents in or out. But if able it's an to employee, they have... If it's all teachers, or have access, they'll have the magnetic card to be able to enter. And if you recall also another project that technology is putting in place, we're adding access controls around the perimeter of each school. And, and Vision has a license through, say, Texas DPS, their license? They're subcontractor. Does they have to submit uh, a subcontractor to have uh, alarm technology uh, licenses to install or modify? I don't think they require, as far as with DPS or state license, just a uh, security uh, want to check qualification. Sure. I know sure. at the sheriff's office, the time that we've we've hired vendors to do access control. I think the thing was that if we're recording data, they're required to be licensed through the state of Texas. And if you go to the DPS website, there's a way to check uh, vendors okay. there. We'll definitely look that. Okay, we'll look into Only because I've, I've heard some story through DPS investigators that the ones that do this work and they're not licensed, they can get they can get locked up. Okay. We'll definitely look into that. For thought, yeah. Sure, absolutely. And they don't have problems with the bonding requirement either, correct? No. Okay. No. Um, in other words, once we give them the, the contract, they've certified that within the 10 dates, they're able to get the payment and performance bonds. And if they don't meet the deadline for a completion, do, is there a penalty? There's liquidated damages. We have liquidated damages built into the contract. So what are your wishes? Do you all have any more questions? What are the wishes we have? Uh, motion on the table and a second if there's no more discussion I'd like to call for questions uh, all those for a vote sorry all those in favor uh, I any opposed one, okay. one opposed thank you motion carries okay, next we have Review and discussion of RFCQ, CQ 026-2015, Testing, Adjusting, and Balancing of HVAC System for Veterans Memorial Elementary School. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, this item that we bring to uh, the bond committee is for the air conditioning system at uh, Memorial, Veterans Memorial Elementary School, number 27. Uh, it's the uh, final process in the installation of our air conditioning mechanical systems. So once everything is uh, started, and we just got power by from AP last week. The entire school is energized, so the contractors at this time starting up all their mechanical equipment, uh, ventilators, fans, and air conditioning systems. And we always have uh, on our project a standard procedure to contract with a third independent party to test and balance the entire system for the for the school. Uh, somebody independent from the contractor uh, that the district uh, will contract directly with them and they will report to us and to the design engineer. And the purpose is to ensure that the equipment and the systems were built and that's the testing part of it is that everything was built 
and it's operating as per design standards, the way the engineers and the architects uh, require that it is perform uh, meeting the performance criteria. Uh, another important part of it is balancing of the air vents, because when the contractor installs it, it's just without actual CFNs, so air volumes, so everything has to be fine-tuned. That's part of the requirements. We did receive two proposals uh, on the base proposal from EHI Service Agency and uh, Thomas McKean from San Antonio. Both companies were from San Antonio and they did have very good references. Uh, and then we asked them, uh, they were the top two, we asked them for a best and final. Uh, keep in mind, this is really a, another purchasing method called the uh, quote, request for quotes, competitive quotes, which we're allowed to negotiate with the vendors and they resubmitted. And the second time around, DHI was actually lower by not much, by about $300 from the uh, one who was 34860. They didn't lower it on the second round of negotiation and DHI lower them more than uh, Thomas McKean, so we would recommend the lowest and best bid, which is PHI service agency. We have done work with PHI in the past. Uh, they did the test and balancing for United High School and Lamar Ruiz Vergara, Kilam Elementary School. Very good firm. Uh, they're not really engineers and they're not really construction vendors. They are specialists in HVAC testing and balancing. So they'll give us a report to do exactly what is needed. The contractor has to meet all those reports, uh, requirements. They'll come back and retest it, reassure that everything is uh, built uh, as per standards. We did have $50,000 per school, for elementary school, to take care of this service. It's very important. And it has to get done before school opens so that the classrooms are balanced and the airflow is adequate. Again, this is a request for competitive quotations. It's below fifty thousand dollars, so this doesn't does not require board approval. But uh, because we are using bond funds to fund this, we, we needed to bring it to the bond oversight committee to let them know that we're going to go ahead and, and contract with this vendor. We are taking it tomorrow night to the, to the uh, board of trustees business committee meeting, also as an information item to let them know that we're going to use bond funds to to fund this project. Uh, Madam Chair, I have a question. A veterans. Uh, Memorial. Is this completed or is it still under construction? It's about 88 to 90 percent complete. Okay. So why are we hiring a different, is this is not the contractors doing your HABC for the school? No. It's no. an independent. Why are we doing it? It's this, this is a testing and balance yeah, part of it. It's not really the installation of the mechanical equipment. It's a third party to come, inspect, and test the system to ensure that the contractor built it exactly like uh, it was designed and intended. Also, the balancing of the airflow uh, really has to get done also by an independent party to ensure that all of the dampers and everything that is that you really cannot see, everything that's behind above yeah. the ceiling, that is actually in place. Uh, we always have opted to go with a third party independent. There's also an option to do it all under the same contractor. But just for checks and balances, we've had very good results getting an independent party because they do come up with a very long list of findings uh, that are reported back to the district. Now everything has to be corrected by the contractor. This company doesn't actually change anything. It's just the contractor who's still liable and responsible. What this company will do once everything is corrected, they will adjust and tweak the system to balance it to ensure the air volumes are what the design calls for. So I guess a contractor doesn't mind anybody coming in and tweaking with the system for uh, for the warranty. Correct. They, it's part is of the <coughs> procedure. That's, that's part of what you spec out when you're. That is correct. Yes. But also, that's interesting. Yeah, but as Mr. Again mentioned, I don't think they do any of the twerking per se. I think they do the inspecting. Correct. And correct. The only thing they may adjust is the dampers, but they're not modifying equipment or anything. They're just fine-tuning it. Now, if they find uh, if there's something that is not working or is missing, they report it to us and to the contractor and the engineer. And the contractor has to go back. And sometimes they find belts or pulleys that are out of whack or missing components. Uh, and, they, and they have to do it because otherwise they cannot balance the system. They cannot give us a certified report. Uh, this 35000 where from the budget does it come from? It comes from there. We have one line item that's engineering and services and testing and other professional services that are not part of the GMP. 
-hmm. Under each school, we have those. We have a line item. Uh, the same line item that we use, for example, for surveys or for testing of the materials, like construction testing, yeah, is part of the overall budget. Is this amount under the what was budgeted Lila, for the line item? For the so how does it affect this? Right, it's thrown into. It's a, a big lump sum for other engineering fees and design costs. But it, is it per school or per pro, per the school? Every school has a. Yes. <coughs> for, for example, for Veterans Memorial Elementary, I believe. This is going to come under the line item construction engineering fees, and that has a current budget of 170,946. Mm -hmm. And as of this report date, there's been 127,000 expenditures. So that right now, there's a balance. Uh, well, that's included in there already. So there is a budget per school for these type of uh, services. I got a question. Who is doing your construction inspection? Do y'all have a construction manager on site? The construction manager? Yes, sir. We have, at each campus, we have different uh, persons. Actually, Benny Salinas, who's here, happens to be here tonight. I think you remember him. He's, do you remember Benny? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 28 certifications. On well, that's why I asked the question, because, I mean, uh, he is highly certified to do all kinds of inspections. Right? But so we still, uh, actually, the official one is the city of Moreno. Well, that I understand, but I mean, I mean, he had knowledge that, you know, no one in the state can really match or, you know, with his years of experience, and that's why I was asking why you're doing an independent test. I mean, this is like a check on the checkers, <laughs> what this is. <laughs> I mean, I don't disagree with it because, I mean, balancing the system is, is quite complex. And they have the right equipment also. Yeah. And that was the other thing. Hood. Yeah. They have the Are you also doing an energy test based on this? For the school? Not at this time, no. no. Uh, it really until maybe about three months after the school is in operation, we start monitoring and keeping track of it. Uh, during the first month of test and balancing, uh, everything is working out of whack, so we have to fine tune it and get it really fine uh, in operation. And then we start really getting, and actually all this is really getting done under the contractor's dime. Uh, it's not, uh, the meter is still not under our name because that's their responsibility. Because to do sometimes testing balancing, they may have to run it 24 hours. Sure. Uh, so it's, they're paying for the electric bill. August 24th, when we, or a week before that, when we officially take over, uh, line decker makes sure we're calling every day to make sure we change the meter. <laughs> it costs them eight to $10,000 a month. Yes. Even though they turn off the light and their, their job foreman is out there just checking, turn off lights when they're not working. Well, Enrique, you've been using this particular method with a lot of your schools? Yes. Sir. Yeah, I think, uh, Ignacio, you go back to when about 15 years using the... Yes, we've tested and balanced every project uh, the past two bonds, you know, and PHI is very familiar with, with the process. And like Mr. Rangel said, they do have the equipment, and uh, we coordinate, and Mr. Salinas and our project manager, Mr. Castillo Mena, will coordinate with the general contractor, and we'll do it in sections, and then, uh, Try to give us the whole the whole building right sure. before school. Sure. It just seems like a tough one to swallow at thirty-five thousand. But if this is normal protocol, I mean, I'm not in the construction business, but we've compared this number to typical other schools that we've done in the past, and this is where the prototype design helps. In that, uh, that's, the, that's the number we we expect. Well, know. let me ask you, I guess, and uh, based on your historical knowledge. Uh, you're not running into any problems with schools, either one area being too cold, the other one too hot, because uh, you have an independent person coming in and balancing the system. Exactly. That's really <coughs> the, the That's the purpose, purpose yes. Except, yeah. except for instances where a teacher gets too cold and puts a piece of cardboard over the middle. Okay, well, yeah. yeah All right. right. Yeah. Don't throw it off. <laughs> Those yeah. kind of things. That does mess you up. <laughs> Thank you. All this item is for informational purposes only. We don't need a vote. Thank you for bringing it to a vote. Okay, on, on the uh, issue of uh, Veterans Memorial, and I know that the, the Bond Oversight Committee was showing some concern about whether it's going to get done or not. We just got word, uh, I believe the week before we broke, from Line Decker Construction that we should be able to start moving in furniture July 24th. Wow. So. <laughs> the current bond project status report. Good evening, Bond Oversight Committee Chair, many members and members of the audience, Ignacio Lenise, Director of Construction, reporting the uh, bond project status report, starting with 
Veterans Memorial Elementary School. Construction progress to date is 88% completion. And the time extensions to date was 45 days that haven't moved. The uh, contractual completion date uh, remains at September 6, 2015. I, I do want to go out on a limb here, though, and say that, like Mr. Zuniga just mentioned, the, we, uh, the, the progress has moved considerably here these past couple of weeks, and uh, the weather has helped in that instance. And uh, we have scheduled the 24th of July to start furnishing the building. So we feel comfortable with the interior space uh, to start receiving the furniture. Uh, the kitchen is fully equipped, and uh, we're working on the uh, finishing up the, <coughs> the details on the loop, which is vital for any school opening, as well as the parking area, which is pretty much complete. So uh, we're feeling pretty confident right now that, uh, you know, weather permitting, we don't have any more of these heavy rains that we should be, be okay for uh, the first week of school. And this is uh, generally a progress report ending June 26th. Uh, regarding the areas, we have uh, areas A and B, which is initially a uh, classroom wing, pre-K wing. The installation of finished materials is ongoing, principally the installation of ceiling grid, chip board, door <coughs> downs, and primary priming and painting of the walls, cabinets and millwork have been primed, painted and installed, and the mechanical machinery has been completed. The contractor is waiting for final electrical connections for operational testing. This, this report was prepared like two, maybe a week and a half ago. Since then, we have gotten power on site, so uh, systems are being turned on, like Mr. Renan says, mm -hmm. and uh, we will be testing the finishing units, as well as all the lighting components. So that's a real big, uh, big accomplishment for the general contractor getting that, that power. In area C, we have the installation of interior finished materials ongoing in large portions of the area. Finished flooring has been installed in cafeteria, kitchen, and classrooms. Splendid grid, metal furrier, jib board, and ceilings is currently being installed, coated, and painted. And the kitchen equipment installed, installation is ongoing. And in area D, which is the uh, gymnasium area, finishes paint trim work is, is pretty much completed. Installation of sports equipment as well. And uh, the platform for the stage is being finalized. Now looking at the site work, uh, the subgrade prep and concrete placement of the perimeter loop and is currently 90% <coughs> complete with concrete curb and gutter sections at the east, south, and west side of the building. And the site contractors completed the paving of the visitor parking area. Now the courtyard area is the contractor continues to work on seating wall for the courtyard instruction area. That's a, uh, like an amphitheater feature that we have in, in our courtyards that, uh, that's being finalized. And uh, here's some progress photos showing uh, some of the two views, some of the finishes that I just explained, some of the typical classrooms, some of the seating work, some of the wall seating uh, mechanical electrical plumbing installations section, uh, more interior work, and then some sections of the uh, parking and drive areas. <coughs> Kitchen equipment. The flooring. And this is that amphitheater design uh, in the courtyard area. That's it for uh, Veterans Memorial Elementary School. We have any questions? Okay, going on to <coughs> you know high school man? date is 6%. No time extensions are requested. And the completion date is March 31st, 2017. What we have generally here is uh, still a lot of, a lot of site work underway. You can see in different areas of, of the pads are being worked on. 
That's in where 28 located? It's on Ichi Ranch Road, okay. 59. Yeah. Yes, it's immediately adjacent to our new compound. Mm -hmm. And there's already some, uh, some metal building components being delivered to the site. Any questions on 28? Go to the middle school. The middle school as well, it's just uh, directly across the street from I don't know, 28, and uh, we're at 3% completion there with March 31st, 2017, the substantial completion date. And uh, see a little more of the same or uh, more site work and integrating uh, throughout the, uh, the site. It's been clear that the mm -hmm. control measures are in place and it's just a lot of site work. Both, both these schools are uh, same contract maker. Yes, sir. So they're basically doing like one. Yes, sir. Yes, and, and that was the reason for, for planning that one as well. The mobility and the mobilization is really yeah, key here. Well, you had it tough, right? Please. You know, now, uh, south ninth grade, uh, progress to date is 16% completion. No, no time extension requested. And July 15, 2016 remain the substantial completion date. The uh, Section C work in progress, you have uh, the concrete masonry unit, the CMU wall placement in progress, steel structure placement as well, and installation of electrical roughing outlets on these uh, walls. That's uh, part of the uh, classroom area. Area D as well, uh, CMU wall placement in progress, the steel structure placement, and uh, as well electrical roughing. In area E, we have a concrete slab pour and the CMU walls are, are underway. And uh, area F, trenching for foundation, footing, and progress. Plumbing, that's all the under slab, plumbing, electrical, in, in underway. And these are some progress photos showing uh, some of the progress in these areas I just explained. Of, uh, you have exterior walls, interior walls, you have some of the metal beams, it's framing, exterior walls, insulation boards, uh, the concrete slab prep, and some of the, some more footing and foundation prep. Any questions on United South Knight? Okay. United ninth grade. United ninth grade, uh, we're at ten percent completion and uh, no time extension and a substantial completion date is December 10, 2016. Okay, in area C, uh, the CME wall, place, wall placement in progress and placement of the structural steel is ongoing as well as the hollow, hollow metal windows installation. In area D, we have uh, the same uh, CMU wall placement in progress, placement of structural steel and uh, hollow metal windows as well. Area E, the rebar plumbing and conduit adjustments are ongoing and the uh, site is being prepared for concrete pour. So there's still some, uh, some slab prep underway for uh, area E, which is, which is uh, partially classroom area. And these are some progress photos, detailed photos of the, uh, of the areas in progress. Any questions on United Night? And just to uh, reiterate, uh, like I've explained in the past, the uh, project consultants, all the architects, uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and structural engineers do visit the site periodically and do provide us with uh, pre board inspections and uh, reports. So, uh, and we do conduct weekly meetings as well there in our office to, to ensure that we stay on track. Now, included in this report as well is the uh, parking lot lighting improvement project at various campuses. <coughs> this is a project we brought before you uh, for your approval and uh, we're at 80% completion. Yes, with the future construction, this, uh, these are lighting at, at three different campuses. 
contractual completion date of August 7. And these are some of the project photos showing where uh, they've had the trench to run these, uh, these new light poles <coughs> at parking areas <coughs> along the drives. And they have this at the Gonzalez Middle uh, path to the subdivision, the adjacent subdivision. And this project as well has been monitored by, uh, by the engineer record and, uh, and our project managing team went out there to see the, uh, the works, the, the lights working and, and uh, in progress. And the final presentation is uh, for Finney Elementary School, the ADA hardware project. This is a project we brought back as well and the new food. And we're at 95% uh, completion with uh, the installations. There was an eight day extension, but uh, they were able to uh, still maintain that the, the good flow and are about finished on this project. Actually, is that completion date correct? Well, we gave them the eight days. With, that was with the eight days, July 15th. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it should be 20, uh, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're not such a big project. <laughs> anyway, uh, this project is pretty much completed. And I have some, uh, some interior views. So I mean, that's it. What, was, uh, what were the eight days that they asked for? For what? Excuse me? How come we uh, added eight days to the project? Oh, this was, the eight days were, were added, Mr. Villarreal. Uh, Due to a, um, there was like a scheduling conflict where we had some some maintenance done in the in certain <coughs> parts of the building that were not accessible and, and to not uh, yeah, our employees were doing some maintenance inside okay. the hallway. That's the waxing. Like that. that Thank waxing. you. Yeah, the waxing and we okay. didn't want to step all over that, so we went ahead and just uh, considered that. Here's a, just some of the views showing some of the hardware placement. And that uh, wraps up the report. Any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Okay, Chavez. thank you. The bond program financial report. This is Benavides. Picture rather than the individual detail pages. Uh, You'll see there that, uh, and the pages that you did get, those are the detail per project, but we've expanded and encumbered through June 25th. But just to bring you over to this report, I know it's not very visible, but you should have gotten. Uh, oh, there you go. Uh, really, the biggest changes uh, we have been already putting in the purchase orders for furniture and equipment. Uh, from last month's meeting, you'll see that in the elementary school campuses uh, for Veterans Memorial Elementary, we put in about 737,000 uh, requisitions <coughs> for furniture equipment and technology equipment. Uh, we also had a couple of uh, engineering fees added to United High School, uh, Highway 359 East Middle School, and Highway 359 East Elementary School. And you saw from Ignacio's report that, that those, uh, those projects are on, on their way. The other place where there was an increase was in the instructional interactive technology all campuses. We have put in the order for, for what we call the interactive flat panels of 490,000. Uh, what we've decided to do with that project uh, is, I think we've ordered about 70, 70 to 80 panels for existing campuses to pilot them before we spend $8 million. And so uh, the new elementary is getting those interactive flat panels in their classrooms, and then we're, we're piloting in our existing campuses. 
And what we're going to learn from this pilot project is what are we going to need from maintenance to take down existing marker boards and what kind of electrical, if, if any, is needed, uh, any paint jobs uh, to put in these interactive flat panels. Because it's, it's a different world for, for the teachers out there versus a marker board. And the data lines. Oh, and the data line. So we'll learn a lot from these 70 to 80 classrooms that we're going to retrofit. And then before we start spending, you know, four million or eight million dollars, so we'll we'll keep you all updated to see how that's going. And then our instructional people are going to train these teachers how to use these flat panels in their day-to-day -day lessons, and and then you know they'll get that kind of feedback from from the instruction side as well. So we'll be moving along. The other big ticket item that 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 got uh, encumbered was the upgrade of the security surveillance camera system. Y'all uh, gave us the approval to move that item up to our board and they did approve it. It's the cameras and access controls uh, for all the elementary schools, that $2,691,000. That's a big chunk of that project. For right now, it's, it's gonna be for all the elementary schools. Phase two of our, of our uh, projects will have the secondary schools. So the elementary schools are gonna be uh, uh, added the, the cameras and the access controls. And I know, Mr. Lopez, you're a, a asking about the access controls. That's a project that has the perimeter doors having access control. That's under the security line item. And then we added about 98,000 in engineering fees to the Alexander additions. Uh, pretty much we added 4.5 million in encumbrances and expenditures from last month. Uh, you'll see that we are starting to spend more and more money. Uh, we are issuing bonds this month. Uh, our financial advisors are, sell, are going out to the market uh, next either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. We, but still, we have the authority to go out there. The board granted authority in the June board meeting to, once we have a certain condition in the market, that our financial advisors are able to sell these bonds. And it will be $100 million. Uh, we have uh, very experienced underwriters going out there in the market for us. And so we hope to bring back some good pricing terms and uh, maybe in the August meeting uh, with the bond oversight, we can bring you the final pricing terms of those bonds. So uh, the team is ready to borrow another 100 million. And I know you may have seen in the, in the paper that we may have to increase the tax rate two cents to cover the additional debt. We still keep on getting <coughs> updated values from Webb County Appraisal District. Uh, they're looking a little better than what we thought uh, for right now. Uh, so we may just go maybe a penny and a half, maybe not the full two cents, but uh, we'll wait to get, to get those appraisal values. We should get those in by July 25th to calculate the debt rate that we need. So we'll keep you posted probably in the, in the August meeting. I don't know if anybody has any specific questions on any of these other I just have a, excuse me, Madam Chair, I have a, on Veterans Memorial, I know we were talking about construction engineering fees earlier, and then I just happened to notice a construction contingency, there was a draw on that. How does, how does that mechanism work? Because I thought it was, I mean, in my head, construction exhausts everything that they have, and then if there's, if they need, they go to contingency, but here it seems like they took a draw when they still had money. Is there something specific that was done there? Or... Oh. I see a draw of 59,817. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Hamado, there were several items uh, during the during the year, during construction, that came up that were unforeseen. Uh, there is a listing that I can, we can provide to, to the committee of all those contingencies. Uh, there were either owner requested changes uh, throughout the project or any items, uh, I do remember, for example, one unforeseen condition was uh, the extension of the water and sewer utility lines. It's a major expense. At the time of uh, providing the GMP, the property was under the planning process. So we did meet with the city and talk to them about options uh, to extend the sewer line. I think we mentioned at one meeting uh, to the committee where we had to bore through the street to get to the nearest uh, manhole for sanitary sewer. So since at the time of design uh, and GMP proposals, all of that information was really not available until a few months later. That's where the contingency 
was used for. Uh, there are several. There's there have been several items uh, uh, that uh, we have allocated from construction. We can give you a, an outline. Of well, there, but there, the, the basically the process, I guess, is that if a contractor feels that that wasn't that that shouldn't be his cost, he's going to bring it to your attention. Absolutely. And if there's going to be discussion yes. about it, and if you do feel like it, it's not his cost, then that is contingency correct. is. We have, we have to approve all of it. Right. We have forms that they have. We have to approve, and all the way to the administration, they have to submit a backup information, detail, RSVs, costs for any changes. So there are a couple of. The end. Yeah. They don't wait till the end. <laughs> no, no. It's throughout the entire process. During excavation, they did uh, line their construction some, some uh, underground rock that was pretty hard to to remove. Uh, right, Benny? I think yes. at at Silito Lindo was quite a bit of rock and they kept tabs because any of those situations that were not known in the original it was just a section of the entire 20, 15 acre track uh, where, where they found it and I believe during the report that Nasha was uh, back then providing you did see some of those massive rocks uh, that's also they haven't submitted the final number but I know they better, we're keeping us abreast of it's coming you know but we do have the funds yeah let me add, uh, we have a form that we uh, we have reviewed. It's called the Contingency Allowance Expenditure Authorization Form. It's a CAEA form, and that's where we uh, we list the item that that we're requesting or we're going to consider, and uh, it, it needs backup or support, you know, information for that number, and then it goes through a series of signatures before it's authorized. So. We like to ensure that, that you know, we keep track of all those good things. Thank you. Anybody have any more questions? Okay. <laughs> any more questions? <laughs> any more questions? Uh, okay. Uh, open agenda. Anybody have any items <coughs> you'd like to bring forward? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd just like to introduce a new employee to our, to our area. Uh, we have a new Director of Energy Management and Environmental Services, Mr. Manuel Menchaca. <coughs> and we can pick him because he's an Aggie. Um, <laughs> he actually comes to us from, uh, he was at Sony, I believe, for 30, 39 years? I'm sorry, 29 years. He was currently with HIMSA Cooling Towers, but he's got a, a degree in electrical engineering, and so uh, we feel he's going to be a great addition to our to our team. And an MBA. Yeah, I'm an MBA. From where? From where? Well, the, the MBA is from Temi. Yeah. So sister, but the bachelor's was from where? Texas A&M. Okay, the date for our next committee meeting, Monday, August 3rd, or do you all? Or Monday, August 10th. What do you all? <laughs> I would probably recommend the, the third. The third? Get out of the way. Well, so tentatively, tentatively, we'll set it up for August 3rd if, if we need some additional time because there's maybe a pending. Or the 10th, either one works, whatever you feel is yeah, best. Whatever, whatever you feel is best. Well, it give us closer to four weeks apart. Maybe. Well, then let's go with the 10th. With the 10th? Let's go with the 10th. Now, I will ask you one question. Are your employees still going to be working till 6 o'clock? August the 10th, we're back to the uh, 8 to 5. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, they're still working. We'll be meeting at 6.15 and give us some parking out here. <laughs> Can leave early, <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Did anyone sign up for public comments? No. Okay, then thank you all very much. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.